Hi, I'm Charlie White, and today I'm going to show you how to achieve a really good result filling holes in wood. Today's toolkit is nice and straightforward. We've got two part professional wood filler, filling knife, and a block of wood wrapped in sandpaper. I'm making some covered doors, and I've put countersunk screws into the front of the doors, and so I need to fill screw holes before I uh, sand and then paint the doors. What I use to do this always is a two-part professional wood filler. The reason I use this is because it has a separate hardener that you mix with the wood filler. That means the wood filler goes off really quickly and enables you to fill the hole and then sand it within sort of 20-30 minutes so that you can move on and paint prime gloss whatever what you're doing. I got this filler from Johnston's Decorator Centre but you can get them at B&Q Homebase, all big DIY stores. Lots of different brands do them. I'll put a list of brands at the end of the video. So, in the tin, you get a little tube of hardener and you get a mixing spatula. Open the tin. What I normally do is get a bit of wood, just an old scrap of wood, it doesn't have to be wood. I like using wood because it's a really good medium to, to mix the uh, filler on. So, I take a little, depending on how much. The thing about this stuff is it sets quite quickly depending on how much hardener you use. So when you start, just put a little bit on just so that you can get used to using it. And then if, as you become more confident, you can use more. But don't forget, the more you put down there, the quicker you've got to work on it once it starts setting. So, a little bit there. And I'm just going to add a little bit of hardener. They, one of the rules of thumb they talk about is a golf ball size of this has a pea size of the hardener so you know you just want to put I mean that, that'll be more than enough of this job. Now mixing it you've obviously got to be quite thorough doing this. This is kind of the way I've always done it, it seems to have served me pretty well. The more hardener you use, the quicker it'll set. So in an ideal world, depending on how quickly you want to sand the filler down, you want to err on the side of caution and use less hardener rather than more. Like I say, unless you're on a rush, in a rush. Right, that's nicely mixed. Now the trick to putting this stuff on, because it sounds pretty hard, you want to leave as little residue behind on the surface that, as possible because then it makes the sanding process a lot easier. So I just filled a gap there and again I've smoothed it really tight. Again, you want to leave the filler a little bit proud of the surface so that when you sand it you're not leaving any dips. But you don't want to leave too much on there. I've been on a lot of construction sites where the chippies leave loads of filler on the wood and they end up spending hours sanding it off. You sort of wonder why they're doing it really, creating so much more work for themselves. Maybe that's exactly why they do it. go. So once the fill is dry the quickest and easiest way to sand it is about 15 to 30 minutes after you've mixed the filler and to sand it what I use is uh, either a block of wood and a piece of fairly medium grade sandpaper. Or if you want to put in a little bit less effort and you've got one, one of these vibration pad sanders is quite a good way to do it. Leaves you with a lovely 
smooth surface all ready for painting. You'll often find when you sanded the filler flat there might be a small indentation where you didn't quite leave it proud of the surface before sanding. If that's the case, and believe you me, it often happens, don't worry, just go over it again with your filler knife, which is a very easy thing to do because by then there's only a tiny little bit you need to fill. And then when that's dried, get the sandpaper out and just sand it flat again. So, I really hope you found this video useful. As ever, if you've got any questions or comments, leave them below the video and I'll get back to you with my thoughts. Have a look at the other videos I've got on my channel and do please subscribe for access to all my other how-to DIY videos.